Section 7 of the National Geographic Magazine, Volume 5. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Phil Schempf. The Geographical Position and Height of Mount St. Elias by Dr. T. C. Mendenhall in connection with the survey of the boundary line between alaska and the british northwest territory it became necessary to determine the geographical position of mount st elias previous approximate determinations had shown that the peak of this mountain must be very near the one hundred and forty first meridian which constitutes the greater part of this boundary line and that its distance from the sea coast must be very nearly ten marine leagues which by treaty is to determine the position of the line in the absence of a range of mountains parallel to the windings of the coast. It thus appeared that this peak is likely to prove of very great value as a cornerstone of this great boundary line, being at the junction of the 141st meridian and that part of the line which is so vaguely defined in the treaty. The execution of the work in the immediate vicinity of the mountain was entrusted to assistants J. E. McGrath and J. Henry Turner, whose previous explorations and long residence in the interior of Alaska in connection with the determination of the 141st meridian are well known to the members of this society. The complete reduction of the observations made has not yet been accomplished but enough has been done to show the geographical position of the mountain peak within a very small air, and the society will probably be interested in the preliminary results of this work, which are not likely to be modified sensibly by the completed calculations. The field work was executed during the summer of 1892. The party was carried to the working ground by the Coast Survey steamer Hassler, in command of Captain Harbour, who personally took great interest in the work, and facilitated its successful performance very much, taking a very important part. In fact, in the determination of the difference of longitude between Sitka and the astronomical station at Yakutat Bay. In the absence of telegraphic connection with any of these points, a series of chronometric journeys was made between Tacoma, which is near one of the telegraph longitude stations of the great system of the United States Coast and Geodetic Survey, and Sitka which has been fixed as the base of the longitude work throughout the territory of Alaska. Contemporaneously, a series of journeys was made between Sitka and the astronomical station at Yakutat Bay by the Coast Survey steamer Hassler, and by these two loops the longitude of the stations was connected with that of the telegraphic system of the United States. Time observations at Tacoma and the comparison of chronometers at that point were under the direction of Assistant J. F. Pratt. Six complete chronometer tours from Tacoma to Sitka and return were made on board of the steamer Queen, the chronometers being in charge of Mr. T. D. Davidson of San Francisco. This link having also been taken in by the Hassler chronometers on her way to and from the field seven complete journeys are available between tacoma and sitka six complete journeys between sitka and the astronomical station at yakutat bay were made an astronomical station was established at sitka under the direction of subassistant fremont morse who had charge of time observations and the comparison of both sets of chronometers on reaching that point seven chronometers made the journeys between tacoma and sitka and the same number between Sitka and Yakutat Bay. The astronomical station at the latter place was in charge of assistant J. Henry Turner. The connection of this station trigonometrically with the summit of Mount St. Elias was under the direction of assistant J. E. McGrath. This astronomical station was on the south side of Yakutat Bay, and the measured baseline from which the triangulation was developed was on the northern side. The length of this line was a little less than 7,000 meters, or about four and a half miles. The scheme of triangulation is shown on the accompanying sketch, figure 2. The latitude of the astronomical station was determined by the vertical circle observations of the sun's limb, by the method of circummeridian altitudes, and also by the use of a meridian telescope 
and the Talcott differential method. The vertical circle used was ten inches in diameter, and read to five seconds by means of four veneers. The latitude here given depends on these observations, as those made by the meridian telescope have not yet been reduced. Of the six chronometric tours between Sitka and Yakutat Bay, three only have been reduced, and the results are as follows. First trip, June 8 to 13. Difference of longitude, 7 minutes, 48.17 seconds. Second trip, June 24 to 29. Difference of longitude, 17 minutes, 48.31 seconds. Third trip, July 9 to 14. Difference of longitude, 17 minutes, 48.16 seconds. Of which, the indiscriminate mean is 17 minutes, 48.21 seconds. A preliminary reduction of a portion of the chronometric comparisons between Tacoma and Sitka gives for the longitude of Sitka 9 hours, 1 minute, 20.5 seconds, from which we have the adopted longitude of Yakutat Astronomical Station 9 hours, 19 minutes, 8.7 seconds. The latitude of this station from circummeridian observations on the sun's limb, consisting of 16 pointings on the sun near culmination on August 1st, 1892, was 59 degrees, 33 minutes, 51.8 seconds, and on August 11th, 1892, from 20 pointings, the result was 59 degrees, 33 minutes, 48.2 seconds the mean of which is 59 degrees, 33 minutes, 50 seconds, which is accepted as the latitude of this station, subject, of course, to further small correction from the reduction of the results obtained from the Meridian Telescope work. Extending these coordinates to the summit of Mount St. Elias by means of the scheme of triangulation, as shown in the sketch, the latitude of the summit is found to be 60 degrees, 17 minutes, 35 seconds, and the longitude, 140 degrees, 55 minutes, 21.5 seconds. The principal base for the determination of the position of the summit of the mountain was a line connecting Mount Hortz and South Base. The length of this line was a little less than 38,000 meters, or about 23 and one-half miles, and the angle which is subtended at Mount St. Elias was about 20 degrees. Incidentally, in connection with this work, the height of the summit of the mountain was determined. A series of zenith distance measurements was executed from five stations, namely North Base, South Base, Mount Hortz, Ocean Cape, and the Astronomical Station. At the latter point, observations were made on 14 different days. The result for each day is the mean of three sets of six repetitions each, and the series is as follows, the observations being made near noon. Zenith Distance of Mount St. Elias June 11, 1892, 87 degrees, 20 minutes, 50.3 seconds. June 18, 1892, 87 degrees, 20 minutes, 64.2 seconds. June 27, 1892, 87 degrees, 20 minutes, 51.8 seconds. June 28, 1892, 87 degrees, 20 minutes, 51.3 seconds. July 9, 1892, 87 degrees, 20 minutes, 57.1 seconds. July 10th, 1892, 87 degrees, 20 minutes, 49.8 seconds. July 11th, 1892, 87 degrees, 20 minutes, 44.8 seconds. July 13th, 1892, 87 degrees, 20 minutes, 40.6 seconds. July 23rd, 1892, 87 degrees, 20 minutes, 59.8 seconds. 
July 29th, 1892, 87 degrees, 20 minutes, 36.1 seconds. August 1st, 1892, 87 degrees, 20 minutes, 53.6 seconds. August 11th, 1892, 87 degrees, 20 minutes, 52.0 seconds. August 17th, 1892, 87 degrees, 20 minutes, 50.8 seconds. August 18th, 1892, 87 degrees, 20 minutes, 41.2 seconds. Mean of 14 days, 87 degrees, 20 minutes, 50.2 seconds. It will be seen that in the total 14 days of observation, the range of variability in the vertical angles amounted to but 28 seconds, indicating remarkable steadiness in atmospheric conditions. The observations for height at other stations, although less numerous, are extremely satisfactory. The great uniformity of the final results for the height of the mountain as computed from observations at the five different stations is exhibited in the following table. The remarkably close agreement of these figures is satisfactory evidence that this determination of the height of the mountain is such as to leave little to be desired. Summary of Height and Position Mount St. Elias from North Base 18,014 feet South Base 18,012 feet Mount Hortz 18,017 feet Ocean Cape 18,012 feet Astronomical Station 18,000 feet Height adopted mean 18,010 feet Latitude 60 degrees 17 minutes 35 seconds Longitude 140 degrees 55 minutes 21.5 seconds it is interesting to note that in the light of the information of the last year or two it can no longer be claimed that mount st elias is the highest peak upon the continent this distinction seems to belong to mount orizaba in mexico which has recently been measured by means of railroad levels and trigonometrically by dr j t scoville of terre haute indiana the height of this mountain, as obtained by Dr. Scoville, is 18,314 feet. The character of the observations is such that it does not seem likely that this result will be found to be very many feet in air. It therefore appears to be entirely safe to say that Orizaba is the highest peak in North America, and that its altitude exceeds by two or three hundred feet that of Mount St. Elias. A detailed report on the latter mountain, together with the results of revised and complete calculations, will be published in due time. End of section seven.